Now, over 30 stock exchanges around the world joined the UN Global Compact, the Sustainable Stock Exchanges Initiative, and UN Women to raise awareness about gender equality. The aim was to have bells ringing right across global stock markets to bring further attention to the importance of women's economic empowerment, especially with regard to business growth and development. Now, stock exchanges right around the planet are encouraged to promote diversity on the boards and the management of listed companies and to ensure accessibility of capital market services and products to female entrepreneurs of all ages. The key message that the SSC is promoting at these events is the role of stock markets in supporting sustainable development, especially with regard to gender equality. So then let's take stock of where exactly uh, African companies are with regards to gender equality. Vivian Onano is the Partnerships Manager at the Seed Project. She's also a youth leader group at uh, the UN Women Organization. She joins us live from Johannesburg, South Africa. Vivian, thank you for your time this evening. Um, perhaps we should start from a broad perspective. At this particular point, what do we not know about gender inequality in sub-Saharan Africa? What areas do we need further research and policy interventions on? Thank you so much, Rama, for having me on your show on this important day, International Women's Day. Um, when you talk about gender equality, first of all, we need to know that gender, gender gap costs Sub-Saharan Africa $95 billion every year. And this is because of lack, lack of women representation in the labor force, access to quality education, access to quality health care, which, which are basic needs for women in the society. And, uh, I think right now the conversation is around uh, diversity and inclusivity, both at the workplace, in, in politics. Um, if you look at the statistics right now, we have 5% of, of the t CEOs on the continent are women, only 5%. 24% of the parliamentarians are women. So there's more that needs to be done uh, to promote diversity and inclusivity. But also, if you look at the statistics that was released by McKinsey, only three out of seven top male CEOs see the importance of including diversity uh, in their top leadership. Indeed, and that's, so that, that's a, a conversation that we really need to talk about. That, that's a pretty interesting point you raised there, Vivian, Sorry? because we talk about the need for diversity. But if only three out of every seven CEOs, male CEOs, see it as a problem, then clearly we need to get a lot more men, for lack of a better word, to actually change their attitudes uh, in the workplace, in the boardroom and in management, don't we? Absolutely. I totally agree with you. And... Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but UN Women started a program called He for She, engaging top, lead, top uh, male leaders around gender equality and diversity. And uh, the CEO of Unilever uh, uh, has done a really good job uh, in promoting inclusivity and uh, diversity in the top leadership of the company. But there's still more to be done. So I think they, when you talk about gender equality, it's supposed to be an inclusive conversation and it's not supposed to be only a female conversation being had at different corners of different rooms. It's supposed to be a round table conversation with everybody having equal voice, equal participation around the table. That's when we're going to make progress. Indeed. Uh, let me get back to that study that you cited by McKinsey released in August last year. They pointed out that the number of women legislators right across sub-Saharan Africa, that's nearly doubled in the last 15 years. And at the same time, the number of women in cabinet has also risen by a factor of five. You pointed out fairly that, yes, a lot more needs to be done there. But the wider question here is this. Why hasn't that increase in representation translated to better gender equality across the board? Okay, so when you look at the female cabinet ministers, um, yes, the number has increased uh, since 1980 by fivefold. But when you look at it, the, the women uh, leaders, they are not put at key positions, uh, like in defense, foreign, uh, for foreign affairs, uh, finance. They are always put in the social welfare, where they don't have uh, control over the revenues. They don't have control over the budget allocation. But also I want to say, I want to really commend the president of Kenya. He's been very strategic when appointing uh, cabinet ministers. We have a female cabinet minister for foreign affairs, female cabinet minister for security. But that is what we need to do. We need to showcase women as leaders. And that's what has not been happening. When you look at the parliamentarians, this has partly been, no, majorly been due to political parties 
and also quarters. If these didn't exist, then the numbers won't be as high as they are. So there's more work that needs to be done showcasing women as leaders, telling the stories of the women who are already at top leadership, mentorship, sponsorship, access to network. These are really important to help women rise up the ladder. Indeed. Uh, let's focus on another trend, uh, or rather contradiction in trends. Poverty levels across sub-Saharan Africa, uh, they've generally fallen uh, in the last 15 years, but gender and income inequality uh, either persistently stubborn or they've actually risen across most states. How do we explain this contradiction? Uh, okay, so if you talk about the, the, inc the income inequality, uh, it continues to rise between men and women. If you look at women in board, women in board uh, levels, for example, in South Africa, women board members are 17% less than the men. If you look at um, overall in sub-Saharan sub Africa, 61% women, they are, in, they are working, but they are underpaid, undervalued, or, and most of them are in informal sectors. So these are not the growing sectors that contribute majorly to the economy. So that's why when you look at the poverty level, levels, it's decreasing, but the gender gap continues to be there because women's work is undervalued, underpaid, and also in the informal sector. So all these need to change for us to see um, the correlation between um, the correlation between decrease in poverty and uh, decrease in gender equality. Indeed, Vivian Onano from Seed. Thank you very much for putting those matters into context. We appreciate your time. Live from Johannesburg, South Africa.